Good afternoon everybody. Today we are going to study about software delays. This video is just how to learn to learn how to calculate the delay in a given code. We are not learning how to write a delay code. So to know the delay, uh, to know how to calculate the delay, we need to know what is the clock frequency of the microprocessor. We also need to know what is the total number of t-slates or clock cycles in a given code. So uh, let us say we, I have a microprocessor with a clock frequency of 12 megahertz. If I know the clock frequency from this, I can calculate the clock period by using the formula 1 by f is equal to uh, 1, 1 by f where f is nothing but my clock frequency. So in this case, since I have taken the processor to be a 12 megahertz microprocessor, the clock period will be equal to 1 by 12 megahertz which is equal to 0.083 microseconds. Now let us try to uh, understand how to calculate the delay. For this I am taking an example of the following code. I have this code where I am trying to move a value of 100 into I am trying to move a value of 100 into the CX register and I will keep uh, once I move the value of CX into this uh, value of 100 into CX register, I will start executing the loop instruction. Loop instruction we already know that uh, it does, uh, it keeps executing or go, it go, keeps going back to this particular location unless and until the value of CX is equal to 0. So uh, here loop instruction will go to next once it goes to next here, it will decrement the value of Cx. Once it decrements the value of Cx, if it is like if it is Cx is equal to 0. If it is not equal to 0, again it will go to the value of next and execute the same till Cx be, uh, becomes equal to 0. So, if we uh, see, if we see, look at this instruction here, we can see that, we can see that move is an instruction which is having 4 T states or 4 clock cycles while loop instruction will either take 17 T states or 5 T states depending uh, whether CX is equal to 0. If CX is equal to 0 then it will take 5 T states or 5 clock cycles to execute. If CX is not equal to 0 then in such a case it will take 17 T states or 17 clock cycles. Now in order to calculate the delay we will be using the formula, uh, following formula over here. The total delay calculated depends upon the value of CT and the clock period. CT is a total number of clock cycles present in this code. I know that to execute this particular instruction, I will take 4 T states or 4 clock cycles. Similarly, to execute this code, if I have to execute it, one, execute it once, once, then I will take 17 T states. If, uh, 17 T states. If I execute it 2 times, then 17 into 2. If I execute it 3 times, I will take 17 into 3. Similarly, since I am executing it 100 times, this particular instruction will be taking 17 into 100 clock cycles. Plus, I will be executing it once I get out of the loop, I will be taking 5 T states. That is the extra clock cycles that I will be using in order to execute this particular code. So, I have to calculate the total T states that are present or total clock cycles that are present in this particular code and that I will be substituting this particular formula here. I know the clock period. I have calculated the clock period over here. It is 0 0.083. I will be putting it over here. Now, my next question is how do I calculate CT? To calculate CT, we are using this formula. CT will be equal to CT will be equal to C0 plus N into CL minus 12. Please understand how did I get this value of 12. I have got this value of 12 depending upon the loop instruction that I have used. Loop instruction says either I can use 17 T states or 5 T states. So 17 minus 5 is nothing but 12. That is how I have got this number 12 over here. If this changes then obviously this will also change. For example, if you are using a jump instruction, then here you will not get 17 and 5t. You may get some other number. So, difference between those two will be coming over here. 
Fine. Next, what is the C naught? C naught is nothing but the number of overhead cycles. What are overhead cycles? Now, all those instructions which don't come under your loop, those instructions are called as your overhead. Now, if you see the loop instruction, it is going again and again to this line itself. So, only this line is coming in your loop. This move CX, 100 is not coming in your loop. That means to say, this instruction is your overhead instruction. So, this overhead instruction over here has 4 T states. That is why C0 will be equal to 4 in this case. Next, N. N is nothing but the number of times you are running the loop. So, I know that loop instruction will work CX number of times and CX is 100. So, loop will be working 100 number of times. So, in this case, N will be equal to 100. Next comes CL. CL is nothing but number of times your number of cycles per loop. So, I told you if the loop is working one time, then you are using 17 cycles. If it is working two times, you are using 17 into 2. Three times, 17 into 3. But I know loop is working how many number of times here? Is 100. That is why it will become 100 into 17. So, my uh, CL here will be nothing but equal to 17. 100 into 17 minus 12. I told you how we have got this value of 12. 17 minus 5 is equal to 12. If I substitute this, I will get the total number of clock cycles here will be equal to 4 because of the overhead. 100 number of times in executing the loop instruction. And each loop instruction is taking 17 clock cycles minus 12. So, CT will be equal to 1692 clock cycle. So, this particular number I will be still putting in this above equation along with my clock period to get calculate the total delay. So, you can see here the total delay will be equal to 1692 into 0.083 microseconds. So, this is a video where we have calculated the delay knowing what is the value of the count. Count is already given to us. Looking at the count, I have calculated that this delay will be equal to this value. Similarly, it may also happen that the code is given to you, but this value of n is not given to you. And they will tell you, and you may be asked to generate a delay. It could be something like this. Ask, they may ask you to write a code so that it can generate a delay of 1, one millisecond or 2 millisecond or 3 millisecond. So, in our coming video, we will see how do I generate a value or how do I generate a specific delay by writing the code. Thanks for watching my video.